this is Anne with Fiber Designs by Anne, and I'm going to paint a little sky and um, on fabric. And I have a little bit of a challenge so that I'm pretty much one-handed. I'm using a hoop instead of my frames with the tacks on them because this is just easier for me to deal with right now. I've masked off a little area just with some tape. The paint may go under that, but that's just so that I can keep it within the size that I want. I'm using Jacquard Textile Color. And I have it, today I'm just going to use some black and some white. And I'm, I'm trying this. I've never used my fluorescent colors, but I have a fluorescent, I think it's just a pink, and a fluorescent yellow. And I'm going to just see if I can do a little sky. I have a photograph that I'm using as inspiration, which I may or may not show because a lot of times my thin piece doesn't look like the photograph. And so it's just inspiration. I'm not trying to copy it. I'm going to start by, and I have a, a regular cheapy brush, and I have a foam, a foam spongy brush that I don't use very often, but because I want my yellow in my sky to kind of streak across, I'm going to try that and use, use the edge of this and see how that works. I'm going to keep it dry. My fabric is dry right now, but I'll be getting it wet, so I have a mister. So I'm going to just start with my sun, and I can't hold my paint up very well, so I'll just... Uh, on the little on the little palette here, I can I can't hold my big my big plate palette up, and we'll just see how this works out. Little pieces of stuff falling in there a little. That's okay. And I'm just gonna give it a zigzaggy kind of. That's what I'm seeing in my photograph. Just a little zigzag, and I can see that this is a little more transparent than my regular yellow would be, but I think that's going to be okay. And because this is dry, the paint's not really traveling. My paint is straight out of the bottle. I have not added any water to it. And it's even looking a little green to me at this point, and that's too regular, so I'm going to see if I can dust it out. I can hit this with water now, and it would only blend a little bit, because once it hits that fabric, I've said so many times, you've probably heard me, it's pretty much gonna stay there. I'm gonna actually dip into my pink now. And I am going to put a teeny bit of water on my palette, just squirting a little bit. Let's see if I can show you that. Just squirting a little bit in there. And this is just a lid, I'm calling my palette, but it's just recycled lid. And this, of course, is gonna turn that um, pink into an orangey color. And I'm gonna just drag some of that through my yellow. Very cool. I realize these are these lines are going to be in there, and I have this was not pressed, and you can see what's happening. I have a little line going through here. That may or may not be a problem. If I if it's going to be in a regular landscape, I'll just put a tree trunk across there or something like that. Not going to worry too much about it. Now I'm going to hit this with some water, which means that my tape will probably raise up. We'll see. I'm just get it damp all over. The squirt bottle is kind of at the end of its life, I think, so water's going everywhere instead of giving me a nice mist. I'm going to get my brush wet, which normally I would have a little container so that I could actually dip the brush into it, but I'm just tapping it in some water on my tray over on my palette over here, just to get this this uh, fabric a little more wet all over in the right uh, areas that are dry. And I can pull this, and let's see what happens. Drags it out a little, gives it kind of a neat, a neat dusty, foggy, kind of misty look to it. Kind of have to experiment. I'm never really sure how far it's going to pull the paint. Depends on the paint, depends on how wet the palette is. And normally I would go ahead and use this color up in here if I was doing a blue sky, but because I'm making this more of a gray kind of sky, I'm not going to... Uh, drag that color up into that. It may happen anyway because that's just the way this goes sometimes. It's one reason I love painting on fabric. It just is not the same as paper. It has somewhat of a mind of its own. Okay, my brush has not been cleaned, so there may end up being some pink up in there. Don't really want it sopping wet, but today it might happen just because it's having some trouble getting all wet. And of course these, these Cheapy brushes tend to, to uh, lose some, some of their bristles. Just kind of go with it. 
So now that's all nice and wet, I'm going to see if I can pull back some, put back some, which means I might need to get in, I'm going to get another foam brush. Excuse me two seconds here. Maybe I'll edit that out. I'm just going to throw a little more of that yellow on there. I have a, I have a new sponge now. Let's see if it works. And I could have done this with my, I usually do, in fact, use my brush this way and just do it with the regular brush, but I wanted such a sharp edge, I decided to use the foam. Yeah, I'm liking that. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is move my, give myself some more room on my palette is what I'm going to do and move my colors. I'm going to probably throw a little more pink on there too. Maybe a little more pink and it won't have so much orange. We'll see. We'll see what happens when I do that. Now that it's wet, it, in fact, I'm going to use my brush, it, it will really diffuse sort of and mush and look like a misty, dusty sun, sunrise or sunset. Whoops! That's that one-handedness. Won't matter at all. Just gonna pull some of this down, give it a little bit of a a little bit of a downhill pull here. So that it's not just a straight across sky, that you get the idea that some some air has blown it one way or another. This is really fun. I've never used these fluorescents, and boy, that's given me quite a impact with the color there. Now, a little flake of something on here, bristle or something. Could be cat hair in my house. Okay, we'll just scoot that off. There we go. Now, I'm going to do what I started to say I was going to do, which is to move my, I'm a little short of space here today, move my colors and take a teeny, teeny bit of uh, black and put it into my white so I'm actually going to take my white I'm going to put a little bit I'll hold this up for a second I'm going to put a little bit of a white off to the side here and then I'll put a little teeny bit of black so I still have some white that hasn't been contaminated with the black and I'm going to spritz a little water down here because I want it to be a little bit thinner although I just opened this white and it's so beautiful White does funny things, you know, in paint. Uh, you may not know that, but if you've dealt with white, you know what I'm talking about. And to have a new bottle is, woo, pretty fun. Okay, I need to have a little, another stick here for my black, not that one. Let's see. And, of course, it only takes a tiny black to change that. I'm working sort of for a gray. We'll see what happens. May or may not get what I want, but keep working at it. And it's going to seem kind of, let me hold this up again, it's going to seem kind of dry on my, on my uh, palette here, but it's, once I hit the wet fabric, it should be okay. And I'm going to start in my picture, the darker, usually I start at the top and wash it down, but in the picture, my, the photograph, the dark is right on that bright uh, sun, sun and sky there, and that's neat because the, the contrast will be there. And this, of course, is darker than I want. But I'm going to just just go for it and blend it. And because I didn't blend the white in too much, it's, it's going right there, uh, showing just like it's some more clouds. And I'm loving that. Just bring it out. I like to use my fingers, as you can see. And we'll just make this a little more. I'm getting too much, too much white right there. Because if this is dark, it's going to make that contrast pop where that other color is. Oh, I'm liking that a lot. And this in my photograph is actually kind of purple and I could drag some of that pink in here and probably get that purple color, but I'm not going to. I'm going to just I'm going to just sort of shine it that way. Let it be that way. I am going to see if I don't totally mess this up. I am going to bring some of my pink in there because I want that to go all the way across to the edge. And I'll just brush, and you can see my, my uh, tape is raising. That's okay. Now I'm going to mix, I'm going to put a little more water on my palette into my gray that I mixed. Oh my goodness, this thing is squirting water everywhere. 
And I'm gonna grab some more white. So I'm really lightening up my gray. I'm also thinning it out an awful lot. So we'll see, it may just bloom and not, not go where I want. I don't know if you can see this. Uh, this is sort of, I don't know if I hold that up, it might make my camera totally out of focus, but I'm gonna see if I can, instead of zooming in, I'm gonna bring it up. That, those lines sometimes can be used, especially with gray clouds, and it's bleeding into the fabric, right? But it looks like rain coming down sometimes. It's really, really fun to have that kind of effect going on. And I need more white, obviously. That's too dark. I want a little more contrast. And you can see how fast and easy this is. You just go back and forth, a little crisscrossy motion. And you can leave the fabric, use the white of the fabric and not do this, the rest of this. But um, I like to use the white sometimes because then it looks a little bit more like white or lighter clouds. I am really liking that. I'm just gonna just pull a little bit of gray. Let's see, a little bit of gray, maybe a little bit more black. And that's too much. Let's just pull a little bit. And that's way heavy, so I'm gonna lighten my brush up really fast here and just pull it down. Pull it down. I am really loving this. Really fun. Let's give it a little more. If it starts to get dry, you can use a wet brush rather than just squirting it. If you squirt it, you're going to get a different reaction because you're going to be putting droplets down and, and it will for sure give you a different, different kind of effect. So just take that into consideration. I love that. I am really happy. You can see how fast that was. That was actual time. And using the fluorescent paint, I think, gave us this awesome contrast. So I'm very, very happy with this. So this is my little tiny sky. I'll try to use it in a landscape sometime if I can, once I'm all here with my hands. And I thank you a lot for being here. If you haven't subscribed, I hope you will. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. I always appreciate you watching. This is Banan. Thanks a lot.